Hi, I'm Shuen and this is Laurie and we work on the Rivers of Carbon program and this morning we're here at Yas Gorge. We're here because we're feeling fishy. That's right. We're having a feeling fishy field day and we're doing lots of walks and talks with the kids corner and fish and carp cooking demonstrations and a whole bunch of other things that the community can enjoy and more uh, importantly we're also promoting the Rivers of Carbon initiative which is run out across the Southern Tablelands. As Aboriginal people, we uh, learnt to live within the natural environment for thousands of years. Now, my people, the Nonal, have actually occupied down this way uh, for something like 25,000 years. So, my people have been here for a long, long time. And it's quite surprising how many people know nothing about what Aboriginal culture is. We need to make sure that country is um, looked after and, and is uh, being really productive and providing everything that we always need to survive. We've also got people who care about the wildlife that live in the gorge and the fish that live in the gorge. Some of our most um, endangered ecosystems and the most endangered animals on the planet are freshwater fish and one of the reasons of that is because we all need water, we all need fresh water to survive and for agriculture and uh, particularly in countries like Australia that puts a lot of pressure on our freshwater systems and, and adversely puts a lot of pressure on our freshwater fish. These three up the top are the only three native fish left in the Yass River that we've sampled as part of our fisheries sampling practices. Like most people are only aware of you know the fish that they like to catch or you know the bigger species and are familiar with a lot of these other smaller more cryptic species and many that are really threatened and missing from our system so I guess I'd like to you know try and you know obviously inform people about that but also um, yeah get them thinking about the system as a, more holistically as a whole and about you know the aquatic the aquatic ecosystem and the you know the river environment. Part of the focus of today is to raise awareness about the plight of our native fish and to come up with ways of protecting them in a framework of sustainable agriculture where we can coexist with our environmental, all the environmental benefits along the river and we can have farming systems and produce food and fibre and we can actually have win-win situations instead of it always being um, one or the other. So watch this, I'm a little bit curious about these. These this look one. like little cherry plums. <laughs> this one's called our uh, kangaroo apple or the bush tomato. Oh yeah. And it looks like this. Look how good. I cannot help myself with food. It's just got heaps of seeds in there though and that's why I kind of don't like it really, you know. Heaps oh, of seeds. Not bad. Yeah, yeah. Kind of tastes like rock melon you reckon? Kind of. Mm. Just um, raise awareness about the um, the bush tucker that's growing around in this region. So you know, a lot of people not mightn't even know that this stuff is growing in their backyards and stuff. So that's what I'd like to try and get that message across to try and um, protect these native plants and um, try and um, get as many into the into the environment as we can. Most people uh, haven't eaten carp before, but you all know that it tastes really bad, right? Mm. I'm about to debunk that myth today. The belly flap along here. So this bit that goes down over the rib cage, that's one of the bits with no bones in it. So what I do, just grab your knife, start up the head end. So I don't know how we're going there, Lindsay. Good. We've got some for people to try yet. Gee, this is very sophisticated. With a lemon. Sorry, Is this just a fresh fillet, mm -hmm. is it? No. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And the diversity and the abundance of bugs will help tell you about the quality because some bugs are more. I do cream. I do that. So we do those. Beautiful, mate. Absolutely beautiful. Water bugs, they're much more of a long term indicator because mm. everything, the water quality might look okay, but you can see that you just don't have the diversity that you should have here. And so you know everything's not quite right. And we do know the Yas catchment has lots of salts and minerals in it. We know this is a male, we've got these great big these spurs that you can't necessarily see from where you're sitting but they are as big as our incisors really they're a pretty decent size jab I can't say I've ever experienced it and I never hope to and you can see their back feet are really very different to their front feet you can see those claws and those flippers the back feet are more um, designed for just steering them in the water a bit like a rudder but also good for grooming 
we have two species here in the in the Yes River, so some of you may might be familiar with this one. Yeah. So do you know which one is this? Uh, it's a long neck turtle. Yes, there's a long neck turtle, and they have a short neck turtle. There's the Murray River turtle. So is everyone ready to go? We'll we'll walk across Flat Rock and head over towards the construction site. I'm just seeing if we can see any debris, but see that hole down there, it's nothing to have water three metres, three or four metres over the top of that, up, up above that. We're all about the fact that rivers like this one produce multiple benefits for people. Social benefits, cultural benefits, environmental benefits, and it's about enjoying the river for a wide range of good things that we can all enjoy.